Hey guys, hope all of you are doing well today. Uh, we are going to jump into Matthew chapter 9, uh, review a little bit of the scriptures um, and the motivation for fasting. Uh, we're a little over halfway along the journey of the 40 days together. And sometimes uh, it can become blurry about why we started, um, what we were hoping to see happen during the fast, our goals that were a part of our desires initially when we journeyed into the fast together. Uh, so just want to take a moment to recalibrate and consider the motivation and our why for fasting. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 14, it says, Then the disciples of John came to him, asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Jesus gives us the definition or the why, if you will, for fasting. It's to behold the bridegroom. As long as our desires are completely wrapped up in this one reality, there is no opportunity for disappointment. There is no opportunity for frustration. There is no opportunity for letdown. But even as we've discussed in previous uh, emails and videos, there's times when we incorporate our own expectations, our own desires, things that we would like to see happen, um, things that we believe should happen over this period of time. And that's where we can find ourselves experiencing different levels of disappointment or frustration. Uh, even we can find ourselves in the middle of something that we don't know why we began. We don't remember why we started. We don't aren't focused any longer on that because we've given our attention over to other things. My goal today is for us to remind ourselves of why we started. Think back even towards one of the very first emails that we sent out where Michael encouraged us to take time and actually send ourselves messages, whether it be by way of email or text or record audio. This is why we're beginning. I am sure that as we took time at the beginning of this journey together, one of the main focal points would have been to draw near to Jesus so that the veil thins and we can see him and behold him in a beautiful way. As long as this is our expectation, we're not going to find ourselves frustrated, worn out, wanting to give up, wanting to quit. But if we are there, if we have found ourselves giving our attention over, I would encourage you with this. Behold the face of Jesus again. If you find yourself in a place today where you're feeling the fatigue of fasting, set aside time, clear your attention, make room to see him and behold his beauty. Re Fasten your gaze into his eyes. And I believe there's going to be a sense of refreshing that will happen. You'll find a renewed energy to continue on and to continue on well. You'll find a, a renewed sense of desire to turn away from your own appetites and your own uh, things that you want to give your attention to. And instead, you'll find yourself with ease and grace giving over your attention to Jesus, to the beloved, to the one whom we're willing to give up everything for. But in the middle of the fast, sometimes we have to recalibrate. Sometimes we have to resynchronize with his voice and his leading and the things that he's desiring to do and say. Jesus being our expectation requires us actually trusting him. See, sometimes the things that we're so bombarded by, the things that we're wanting to give our attention over, it's just because we don't trust that he's good enough that if all we're consumed by is giving him our attention, that he'll handle all of the things that we want to or we're tempted to become consumed by. We want to come to him in prayer with a laundry list of things that we need him to do in our lives today. But he wants us to come to prayer with room for him to speak and us to steward over the voice, his voice and the things that he's desiring to, to, for us to partner with him in prayer. I would encourage you to trust 
the Lord. I would encourage you to be willing to believe that he's actually good and all of the things that are seemingly necessary for us to give our attention to over in the moment. He's willing to work them out for us. He's willing to accomplish them for us. It's amazing to see that as we give him our attention, as we trust him, as we believe that we can actually let him speak to our hearts and in our times of prayer, we can steward the things that he's saying and that he desires to talk about and not bombard him with all of the things that we feel like are so important that in the background, seemingly, he's working out all of the other things that we're so consumed by. It can be things with work. There can be things with our family. It can be things uh, just in life in general that we seem to be overwhelmed by. I would encourage you today to find rest in the fact that you can trust him to actually engage him in prayer and conversation the way that he desires us to, with a clean slate, with room to hear his voice and actually steward over it well. We can behold him knowing that he's good. We can put aside all of our frustrations, concerns, disappointments, or potential letdown moments and say, God, you're good and you love me and you care for me. And so you're working out all things together for my good as I come to you with a clean slate in prayer to steward over your voice, to steward over the things that you say you want to talk about. I believe that the Lord is desiring for us to resynchronize and recalibrate to his face, to his beauty, to fix our gaze once again into his eyes, to set aside all of the things that are bidding for our attention and be willing to come to him for him. Even as he said, there's going to be a day that comes when the bridegroom is no longer here. And in that day, you will find my disciples fasting. As we're giving over these days to fasting, be reminded that it's to behold him. It's to regain a vision of Jesus. It's to recalibrate our hearts with the things that he desires to communicate to us so that we can be faithful to steward over them in prayer throughout the course of these days. I pray that as we find ourselves together in the middle of this fast, that we would be able to set aside all of the things that are bidding for our attention. Not to say we'd be irresponsible, but we would make room to actually behold the bridegroom because there's so much that he's desiring to do and accomplish in us, in our own personal lives, in our times of prayer, things that are on his heart that he needs a people to steward over well and faithfully. We can't do that if we are so consumed with everything that's going on in our own lives. So I challenge you, I urge you, I encourage you to once again make room. Once again, clear out space in your attention to behold him, to hear his voice clearly, to steward over his voice and the things that are on his heart in our times of prayer, that these days would be days that we would look back on and say, we fasted well. We fasted well. Lord, I pray that each of us would be gripped with the reality that all you desire is for us to fix our gaze on you so that you can share your heart and your burdens with us so that we can partner with you in prayer throughout the course of these days of fasting and praying together. Lord, that our lives would be marked forever. Lord, that our families would be changed and transformed forever. That the cities we live, on, live in would no longer be the same. Lord, that the regions of the nation that we find ourselves in would be completely changed and transformed 
because there were ones who were willing to steward your voice well. Lord, that we would look back on these days, whether that be soon or later, we would look back on these days and recognize and be able to recount the way that we sowed our lives faithfully into your desires during these days of fasting and praying. And we would see the lasting fruit in our nation because of our yes to you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Bless you guys.